chicken rice or Yourself, if your car averages 25 miles per gallon, how much pollution will you cause? Well, driving for a mile will cost 350 grams of CO2 emission. Wait, we have not included 75 grams for fuel production emission and 51 grams for manufacturing emission. Furthermore, did you know that in US, personal vehicles actually consume more than 60% of the energy used for transportation? This is a large amount as compared to 9% for airplanes and 3% for train and buses respectively. On a general note, there has been a steady increase in motor vehicles population. It rose from 956,000 in 2011 to 970,000 in 2012. So, how do this increase in vehicle population and high consumption of energy affect us? Automobiles today contribute significantly to environmental degradation and pollution. They are the main source of pollution which includes ozone, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, as well as many other microparticulate matters. In 2013 alone, transportation contributed to more than half of the world's carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide emission and almost a quarter of hydrocarbon emissions on Earth. Comparing Singapore to other similar cities, Hong Kong has 59 cars per 1,000 residents, half of Singapore's 117. This is despite them being almost similar in country characteristics. A typical mid-sized car that weighs 8,000 pounds would emit over 30,000 pounds of carbon dioxide in its lifespan. When fossil fuels are burned to produce diesel, gasoline or petrol to power cars, carbon dioxide is produced. Carbon dioxide is one of the main contributors to the greenhouse effects on Earth. With the increasing amount of greenhouse gases, global warming occurs which leads to various problems such as the melting of ice caps, the rising sea level and climate change. This harms the biodiversity of our environment. Here are some potential solutions. By comparing two developed areas of the world, the United States of America and Europe, Gasoline in US costs approximately 40% of what gasoline costs in Europe. European driven cars are 50% more fuel efficient as compared to American driven cars. However, both European and Americans spend the same amount of money on cars. This means that Americans drive more in their less fuel efficient cars, thus producing much larger carbon emissions. There are also other kinds of cars, such as the hybrid electric car, the electric car. There are also other cars such as the CNG cars, cars that use natural gases. One solution to reduce the overconsumption of personal vehicles is to opt for alternative modes of transportation, such as renting cars instead of owning one, taking the MRT, riding the public buses, Cycling and even arranging for carpooling could greatly reduce the overconsumption of personal vehicles. Also, we can advocate for smaller and more eco friendly cars. When we buy a smaller car and save on gas, parking becomes so much easier and the ride is guaranteed to be more comfortable than that of an SUV. When we walk or cycle downtown, not only do we save on gas and pollute less, but we also gain the personal benefit of exercise. Another solution to reduce the overconsumption of personal vehicles is to encourage commuters to turn to public transportation. In order to encourage commuters to turn to public transportation, it is only necessary to build an effective and accessible public transportation system. The government has adopted a contracting model and it has done well in restructuring the bus industry. With the new model, the LTA owns bus assets and contracts out service to operators. Within the next two years, a total of 450 buses are being purchased, making the journey a breeze. 
25.5% of the bus services are expected to have shorter intervals and the bus is expected to arrive within 10 minutes during the morning and evening peak periods. Besides having a well-structured public transportation, we can start inculcating a bicycle culture to travel more sustainably. LTA will be adding 8 more cycling paths to the network by 2015 at Yishun, Punggol, Bedok, Pasir Ris, Changi Simei, Jurong Lake District, Marina Bay and Taman Jurong. Our Singapore government has came up with a few regulations, such as ERP, free MRT rights during non-peak hours, and COE.